Hello everyone, welcome to our Let's Play series of The Hand of Merlin. This is Colonel RPG as usual, and I'm very happy that you chose to join me today as we can go to many places. Many, many places. We have a little bit of mana, I want to save it, and we have a little bit of food. And I... It's looking like I could go there, there, there. Oh, look at all the... Wow. You can really make some choices later on, can't you? We got the fonts of the... Of uh, Tamaricos, not Tamarillos, or Tamarillos, or, or, however I was talking about it before. The cooldown is gonna just, yeah, so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven over there. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven over there. It's the same. Okay, okay. No shortcuts. Although, you know, one, two, three, one, two, three, four. Oh, what? <laughs> how, how do you count that? One, two, three. Four, five, six, seven. One, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, there is a shortcut. You just need to go through there because of the things. But you could go through here if you wanted to. Either way, I want to go here. Let's see what happens. While traveling along a dusty road lined by sparse vegetation, you come across a small encampment by the side of the path. A number of wagons and horses are grouped around a pavilion made from swaths of colorful cloth and ornately carved wood. An old man sits in his shade, contemplating a chessboard on the table in front of him. And we're going to approach, possibly play some chess. The man looks up from the chessboard as you approach. His eyes are framed by an intricate, intricate, in, int, intricate, I can pronounce that word, yeah. Intricate web of wrinkles, but his dark pupils are still sharp. His beard and mustache are elegantly styled. Styled? Stilled. That's a word for describing what happens to beard. Mm, stilled and stark white, rendering his skin an even darker shade of brown by contrast. Welcome, he says, measuredly. It is a pleasure to meet travelers in these desolate lands. Tell me, have you come from abroad? I thirst for news from the north, or would you still sit and play with an old man? I will tell him about Albion. You gladly accept his offer of food and drink and sit with him in the pleasant shade of the pavilion for a while, telling him of your travels. It seems Albion flourishes under King Gawain, the old man says, stroking his beard. I hope that this might signal an end of peace. Oh, not an end. An era of peace and prosperity for our lands once this present disaster is averted. And I am keeping you fr from that task, am I not? Foolish old man that I am. I'm going to thank him for his hospitality. And we got three foods. I'm honored that you would spend some time with an old man like me, who has grown too frail to travel. I would have you uh, take some food and drink with you, and thanks of, for your kindness. He motions to uh, one of his servants, who brings some supplies from one of the covered wagons. God be with you on your travels, the old man says as he waves you goodbye. That's nice. We are going to go over here. This is corrupted? Maybe? You have come to the founts of Tamarikush, where a sacred river springs forth. This is said to be a place of healing and a prophecy. Lord Nabur al-Maragi built a castle here and raised Arthur's son, Mordred, when Arthur had the child cast out. It was here, they say, that Mordred returned to recover from wounds inflicted upon him by Lancelot. And from here, he set out to finally overthrow his father. One thing I will want to look at, though... No, not the Gra Guardian Core. I wanted to look at my... Yeah, I still have Roland's Horn. As I was dealing with this thing, I was thinking back in my head. I was like, All right, I threw away Roland's Horn, and it's... No, it's still there. I just had two for some reason. Uh... Let's enter the castle. Since the death of Lord Nabur in a re rebellion against the Emir, the castle has been quiet. Pilgrims will sometimes come to bathe in the water of the springs, hoping to find healing or revelation, but the practice is discover discouraged by Moorish, Christian, and Jewish authorities alike. The castellan, called the Warden of the Three, receives you with surprising warmth and affection. He personally guides you to the sacred waters. And uh, we're going to ask him about himself. There really must be a magical component to these springs, for when you approach the fount the founts, yes, the grail emits a bright metallic sound. I lived a life of sin, the warden says melancholically. Some say I was a hero. Called me the triumphant, 
but in my soul I know that I killed countless innocents. I have taken up this duty in hopes of finding redemption. From somewhere in the castle comes a sudden scream. As you had feared, abominations have invaded the castle, no doubt seeking to defile the founts of Tamalikush. And we're going to rush in to, to strike first. You charge the beasts, catching them by surprise and striking the first one down instantly. By now, the others surround you, their hideous appendages ready to tear you apart. And we're going to stand our ground. It's going to be easy. Don't worry about it because, well, maybe it isn't. Oh, this is a lovely map. It's it's a it's a, uh, a cloister, because of the that's that's what it's called. It's this this sort of thing. Uh, what do we have? We have a mandrake, a wyvern, a wyvern, and a behemoth. So bad news is what we have. Bad bad news. That said, we have quick salts. Nope, wrong one. We have this one. Lovely. So four action points. Mm-hmm. Really powerful. Really, really powerful. I need to be very careful about the cooldowns of things. Uh, because... What in the... Wait, did that change? Move to target location. It's a thunderous lounge. Deals 12 damage to all enemies in, in melee range. What? It doesn't work like it used to. <laughs> Look at this. It's weird. It is really weird. Um, how do I want to do this? So if I move over there, I deal 12 damage immediately. This one is only going to deal 10 damage, so I might as well go. The problem with the behemoth, uh, naturally, is that it will have an out of turn action. That said, that said, amazing things can happen. We have the vicious aim. Let's see. So this is there. One, two, three. Okay. So the vicious aim will increase my range. That's all I need. Well, it's not all I need. It's a part of what I need. So second, I can make ranger's mark there. Thirdly, I can do Relentless Vigil. Which means I get two shots in a row. And I will get two shots in a row. And that is a lot better. So you still have Relentless Vigil, right? Yes. So you're gonna die. <laughs> Uh, that is a lot better because this thing has range for days. So these guys are all going to get screwed up. At least I hope so. Um, we'll see. So I will be here. I don't think that I should be here. Let's see. The red. Yeah. So maybe I'll be here. Let's see. How is that? Okay. That doesn't look very good, actually. Let's move you over here. Hello. And then move you right there. Hmm. It was not what I expected. I'm not gonna lie. Uh, rallying bash. It's gonna make that a little bit better. And you only have one extra action point. Hmm. This thing is pretty good, but I would need to move. And I think it is a bit of a wa well. It isn't a waste. How many action points do you have to... You have two. Let's move you over there. It's kind of a bummer. Yeah. I'll do this first. Not that it's going to do much, but at least I do it for free. That's a kill. So that didn't apply. And I can go over there and bother you. And then you can position yourself, might as well. Okay. That doesn't trigger the attack of opportunity. And besides, it's too close. That one does trigger. 
and you have things are falling from the sky. Wow, that's actually kind of bummer. Oh, oh, kind of a, a bummer. So I don't know what this is. Did they change the game since the last episode again? It doesn't show it like it used to show. So I thought it was the upgrade that we got. I don't know. But I think it's just normal. So I'll go over here and attack you. That's dazed, and I'll do that after. It does a little bit of damage. Is it health damage? Yes, it is. And that is a pain. Okay, then you can't do much. But you can. You also have a little bit of damage, but that's not a big deal. Can't heal, Brunor. Let's not do that then, because you have two action points. Let's get you back here. I don't think that's going to be any better for healing Brunor. It is, actually, surprisingly. Good. And then you can't do anything. I'm good with that. Absolutely fine with it. Yes. A couple of inspired... That's pretty bad, actually. But, no, it is pretty bad. Because now I don't have that. I do have the Sanguine thing, which is nice. That means I can move you right here. It also means I can do this. I can move here. Everything seems to be in order. I can attack with this. Good. I can... Uh, take a shot. I will be able to... That's vicious aim. Okay, I'll be able to kill one of them. And I think you have powerful... Yes, you do. That is pretty good. So we can move you in here. And do this. Which then allows you to do that, which might be a bit of overkill. But you do this. And then you move in and kill 100%. There we go. Overkill is my favorite kind of kill. I mean, the warden is deeply thankful for your help. He is not allowed to have enough men to defend the castle, perhaps to avert another rebellion. To reward your heroism, he offers you many gifts and allows you to bathe in the springs for as long as you wish. And the wish, uh, the gifts are... I can heal, but I don't want to, because you're... we heal automatically. So I'll just take the, the gold, because we might get to go to a, vi a city. Well, this is a city, so yeah. Um, going through here and through there, or through here? Uh... I think we gain... I think it's okay to go for fights. This is, these are just regular nodes, so I might as well just go for fights. The tendrils and vines of the Cataclysm are one of its more subtle horrors, ensnaring, strangling, cutting, and infecting the living rather than openly attacking them like the abominations. But in their own way, they are as restless and as vile as any monster. You are reminded of this fact when you encounter a young Saracen scholar whose body has been pierced and overgrown by these parasitical growths. He stands, still alive, as if frozen mid-stride at a crossroads, slowly dying in agony. He begs you to kill him. Do not fear for your souls, he says, struggling to speak as a vine grows from his mouth. God will know that it is not murder, but liberation. And we could heal him, which is an incredible expense of mana. But I can do it, and I will. Healing this poor man takes a tremendous amount of Merlin's strength. The grail roars as it battles the corrupting energies, growing hot and vibrating madly. The, the grail grows hot and vibrates. But at last, Merlin's will breaks the power of the cataclysm, and as the vines wither, the man's body regains its natural shape. It is a miraculous process to behold, and surely a sign of great victories to come. And we get a bunch of experience for that, which allows us an extra level up which I am very, very happy for. It's, it's pretty good. We get an extra one right there. And that does go down and explaining things that I was uh, 
not to wear off and not uh, yeah. so uh, what are we gonna get here I think this was the one that I liked the best I believe so deals more damage in comparison to our current one deals seven this actually lowers the damage it seems uh, this one over here is sort of the cooldown retraction oh yeah we never they changed the the UI then they definitely changed the UI these numbers I, I, I mean they he must have changed the UI it used to be a square and then it, it wasn't so, yeah, I, I like the one as it was before because it, it, it's more explicit. Either way, uh, thunderous lunge or lounge or whichever one you prefer. It's the cooldowns. No, it is not. It is the, it is the. This one is about that, and this one is apply stacks of dazed to all enemies in a wider range. Now that one I like. Do I like it better than this one? No. I don't think, after the amazing thing that we have with the extra action points, I think I like this one better. So I'll go with that. And uh, for you, Ranger's Mark is nice. Vicious Aim is nice. Relentless Vigil. Ready in action, taking a shot against all enemies, then moving in your line of sight until the next turn. That's for lower cooldown. And that's for... Uh, wait, ready in action, taking against... Until the next turn. A stronger shot, taking a stronger shot. Yeah, yeah, I'll go with a stronger shot. That is quite good. And then for you, we have Quick Salt. We have the this thing over here. This grants one action point to all allies, but they already do that. This is a quicker one. This is more charges. I don't like either of those. The quicker is nice, though. This restores more armor. It restores eight armor points to all allies. And this restores eight armor points to two allies, or twice the thing. So that increases the restore, because right now it's six. And this one is to all allies. Mm. I like this one better, but I don't think I want that. Deals six damage. That's with a cooldown. Honestly, this this one is really nice. We're never going to be too much in, in melee range. And now with the, the many action points that we have, lower uh, eliminating the cooldown, in fact, uh, is, uh, is a very powerful thing to do. Okay, so here... Oh, we don't have... What, what the hell? Oh, right. It's, yeah, I thought, for some reason, I thought I was over there. I was not. Let's move to the next thing. One night, sitting around the campfire, you fall into a deep sleep and into a mysterious shared dream. In it, you are following a jackal with bright blue eyes across a vast desert, while in the sky above you, the stars go out one by one. And we're going to follow the jackal. You follow the jackal for countless miles, hours pass, and when you arrive at the mausoleum, the jackal is taking you to the sky... Right, comas, freaking comas, come on. And when you arrive at the mausoleum the jackal is taking you to, the sky is completely black. That, that is, I was, I also got thrown off, uh, not, I mean, it, it, a, miss, a coma is missing, but uh, apart from that, um, I don't think jackals are native to Europe. I might be wrong, but I think they exist in North Africa and in the Americas. Actually, I don't know if they exist in South America. They might. They probably do, actually. But, and well, I say North Africa. I, I mean, in all the all Af, all of Africa. I'm pretty sure they they don't exist in Europe. Either way, I've never seen one, and I honestly never heard the the term unless I was watching like a, a wildlife documentary or something. Either way, comas. We were rambling about that. Before the mausoleum stand again. Before the mausoleum coma stands a tall woman with broad shoulders and a scar across her left eye. She says something to you, but you do not understand the language she is speaking. She laughs, raising her weapon, and the jackal laughs too. And then you are also laughing, having, underst having understood her joke after all, and I'm waking up. When you wake up, you discover that you built your campfire next to an overgrown mausoleum. Nothing can be dis discerned about who is buried within. The weapon you saw in your dream lies by the fire, looking entirely new. And, uh, it is nice. It is a nice weapon. Just an upgrade to my current bastard sword. We're gonna take it, because of course we are. I mean, why wouldn't I? You are making your way through a town that must have been overrun and destroyed a few days ago. So far, you have not encountered any abominations, but the Vale is badly injured here, and the Grail is making the oddest sounds. 
That's the sound it's making. The main road has collapsed into a deep pit filled with thorn-covered tendrils, so we are forced to find another way. In this manner, you find yourselves in the courtyard of an old madrasa, which seems to have been used as a temporary shelter. We are going to search for it. I didn't. I should. I should have kept watch. Actually, I just search. Yes, but I should have kept watch. You find a few supplies left behind by whoever occupied this place. But this momentary distraction allows a pack of abominations to fall upon you, unawares. Unawares. Wow. I did not know that word could be conjugated like that, because it's an adjective. But obviously, that one is a special type. Uh, also, this is the same map as before, except it's bad now. It is bad, and it's got blood in the middle. And you know, if it has blood in the middle, it's surely bad. That applies to everything in the world. If you got blood, it's middle. What do you mean? We have blood in the middle ourselves. Uh, I see things that I don't like. Why don't I have the... You lied to me, game. You lied to me. You said it didn't decay. And now I don't have plus three action points. What happened to my plus three action points? Such lies. Such lies and deceit. Oh, boy. Okay. Well, we're gonna make do. It's fine. Not really. I mean, it is, but it isn't. At the same time, we got a thorn toe. What do we have? Um, wyvern thorn toe. Okay, nothing terrible. It is actually something terrible, but, um, hmm. So, what do I want here? You are gonna need... Vicious aim, restless vigil, and if I could lose a shot, that would be good, but I probably won't. So, she can move. And if she does move, then it allows me to do this, and then potentially this. Unfortunately, I need to move as well. So, I definitely need to do this, but attacking with anything else seems to be out of the question. So, I'll move back here. Or I will move for the next... Yeah, let's move for the next turn. Move you here. Move you here. Let me just make sure that this applies. It does not. We undo. Well, it doesn't make it any better. Can I do it from here? No, I can't. The thing is, also, what will I do with you? So this is a wider... Does it say a wider range? In a wider range, yeah. So if I attack here... Oh yeah, look at that! It's gonna do extra damage. Okay, so all these people take damage. So what I want to do... What I would like to do is attack you. I can't do much. I could go over here. And then... Do this. And now you can move a little bit. Lo uh, farther, which is nice, but it's not, you know, ideal or anything. So we do Relentless Vigil, because I will. We also do the Thorn Toads need to take, because they apply, yeah, thick skin. So that one over there is a pain. Uh, so let's, I might as well not shoot him. Zero percent chance to hit there? Are you sure? That's a kill here. So Ranger's Mark on your face. I wonder if Ranger's Mark allows me not to miss. No, it does not. Hmm. Boom, 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 boom. That's cool. That's really cool. The soundtrack is incredible. Okay, so I'll move you over here. I should not have done that, by the way. Should I have been in range? But I can do it again, which is, yeah. Uh, okay, so if I can kill the Thorn Toad, that would be lovely. That said, I did not blow anything up. 70% chance to hit, though. Is a waste. So, oh, I can't move too far. I can if I do this. That is a waste. 70%. I'll use it as a backup. Because that could have missed. And I didn't feel like having that in my conscience. 
Uh, will I actually do enough damage to kill you? Oh, we got cover here. That's kind of interesting. I will. No, I will not. This will, though. And it will lower my cooldowns. It just won't give me powerful. Which I am okay with. And then you have one more action point. Let's send you right there. Okay. Off to a good start, I would say. No jumps or anything. Okay, that's pretty good. That's going to hit you both. And it's going to get me out of the way. That is good. We're going to first have the ability... I wonder if I can use that ability even if I have no action points. Like, for example, when you have no action points... Like, I can choose anyone, anyone right now. But I think when you don't have action points, you can't actually choose them. Which shouldn't be the case, because you can use abilities that don't use action... Or you should be able to use abilities that don't use action points after the fact. But either way. Um, so this is going to give me powerful. Uh, do I want that, honestly? Let's go for it. Should have done that before as well. Because of the... Um, Thick skin will, will be a problem. How much damage am I doing here? A fair amount. Let's let's see what I can do. You can't do anything. You can't do anything either. Uh, it's kind of a shame, in fact. Because it's going to force me to move and not attack. And then you can go over here and attack. You can increase vicious aim. But that's about it. And we waste that action point. Then you throw that up. And then do a little bit of armor damage. And shredded. I don't actually know what shredded does. Plus one damage taken to armor. Decays. Oh, interesting. That's fine. You're gonna die now. There we go. 13 renown. Or, sorry, 11 renown. And a little bit of mana. I also forget... I always forget that we get mana from killing these things. So it, it pays to to keep going to places that are corrupted. Either way, we're out of time for the day. So for right now, I'm Colonel RPG, and this has been The Hand of Merlin. I really hope you've enjoyed it. And if you did, go ahead and leave a comment, like the video. But above all, thank you so much for watching, and I hope I'll see you next episode. Bye-bye.